Okay. All righty then. Go ahead and quit while you're behind. <laughs> okay, get your Bibles out. You know, this, like the last uh, the last couple of weeks we talked about uh, being in the storm. And <clears throat> I was praying about it yesterday. And uh, I'm going to going to just finish up in a whole different way about the power of the storm. I'm going to give you some reminders in your storm. Last two weeks was on the power of the storm. Now we're going to talk about reminders in the storm. So get, get your Bible. I don't really have a, a, a straight text. I got more of a, of a topical, which I don't normally do, but I'm going to do topical today. Turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians 4, 7 and 8. Let's just take it on down to verse 10. Stand for the reading of the word. It was so amazing this morning to, uh, to be awakened uh, by preaching in the church and preaching to all colors, all races. And we got crazy. I loved it. Got some crazy praise going. I was just... Yeah, I mean, I just woke up rejoicing. It was just a powerful thing. I, I said, God, I, I don't know if that's going to happen today, but I know it's going to happen. And I'm thanking you for it. Amen. You know, say amen. Amen. All right, 2 Corinthians 4, 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. In other words, God, give us something uh, wonderful, treasure, gold. And the problem is the gold's in a wooden box, a clay box, actually, a clay pot. And the clay pot has cracks in it. The clay pot breaks up. The clay pot gets in all kinds of trouble. So, so uh, here we are. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. And God did it on a purpose that the excellency of the power would be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the Lord also, also the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Stretch forth your hands this way. Father, we love you. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, God, for you. we feel your presence in this place today. Father, we welcome your presence. God, help us, Lord, to get lost in your presence today. And the way to get lost in your presence is to get lost in the Word. As the word goes forth, Lord, even though it's coming from clay lips, Lord, the word is golden. The word is a treasure. Help us, Lord, to take it and to deposit it in our clay vessels and to know that something special is taking place already, but it's taking place even more as the service progresses. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated away down until somebody uh, it passes behind us. The future is ahead. ahead of us. God is, God is with us. And, and nothing, and, and nothing, and nothing shall be impossible. Sister Grace at the convent opened a letter from home and found a hundred dollar bill from her parents. She smiled at a gesture and as she read the letter by the window, she noticed a shabbily dressed stranger leaning against the lamppost just below. Quickly, she wrote, don't despair. Sister Grace on a piece of paper wrapped the $100 bill in it and tossed it out the window. The stranger picked it up, read the note, and he tipped his hat, and Sister Grace and hurried away. The next day, Sister Grace was told that the man was asking to see her. So she went down and found the stranger waiting, and without a word, he handed her a huge wad of $100 bills. What is this, she asked. He said, this is your $8,000, Sister. He replied, don't despair, paid 80 to 1. <laughs> You got to think about that one. <laughs> All right. It got good. All the time. So now, how many of you know we've been through some storms lately? <laughs> Amen. Uh, we got that physical storm. We had some this week. Uh, there, there's storms all over the world, but there's also storms in our heart. We've been talking about it for a couple of weeks. So today we're just going to have some fun. Uh, I hope you have some fun. If you don't have fun, then uh, uh, we'll just keep praying for you. Amen. Because this is this is... This is something really, really awesome to remind ourselves when we're going through something. Don't confuse your path with your destination. Just because it's stormy 
Now doesn't mean that you are hidden. You aren't hidden for sunshine. <coughs> Remember that. I'll say it again. Look, I love it. Don't confuse your path with your destination. Just because it's stormy now doesn't mean that you aren't headed for sunshine. Amen? God's got this. Y'all say that. God's got this. Amen? Yeah. Don't talk about how to stay strong during life challenges. And God remind me again. Hey, have you ever just had to be reminded of something? God's doing something for you, but you just kind of forget that, that what he's doing or, or you, 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 your trust starts dwindling or you just kind of fade out with God. You just fade out. You just push him to the side. He's second, third, fourth, fifth place in your life. And then all of a sudden God starts tapping you and says, look, I don't like being third, fourth, fifth place. I don't like being in the back of the line. I want to be in the front of the line. And so God starts reminding us. So, so here we are in these storms. And there's, a, there's a six things. I'm going to go through pretty quick. So, yeah, you, you have to fight through some bad days to earn the best days of your life. Remember that. You have to go through some bad days, fight through them to earn the best days of your life. So watch this reminder number one. Get ready. Here we go. We're going to be kind of quick. I hope we are. Matter of fact, the more you shout, the quicker we'll go. <laughs> Glory! <laughs> Okay, we're going slow, real slow right now, but we can get faster. Ready? You have, look at somebody and tell them, you have a 100% track record for getting through everything in your life. Tell somebody that. Tell somebody else. You have a 100% track record for getting through everything in your life. We are surrounded and battered by troubles. This is the message version of what we just read. We are surrounded and battered by troubles, but we are not demoralized. We're not sure what to do, but we know that God knows what to do. We've been spiritually terrorized, but God hasn't left our side. We've been thrown down, but we haven't broken. Wow. Come somebody give the Lord a hand clap on that Come on. Yeah, yeah, I've been thrown down, but I ain't been broken. Yeah, yes, things are tough, but I'm telling you, I'm still eating. Watch this. I love this anyway. Look, look. I'm still breathing. So are you still breathing? My heart's still beating. You have Amen. God's got this. We can keep going. There's things that have hit all of us that we thought was going to be the end. But guess what? We're still here. Somebody needs to get happy. Amen. We're still here, aren't we? Look, look remind yourself every day. It will be okay. Y'all say that it'll be okay. Come on, it'll be okay. God always somehow gets me through it. Trust him. Just say I trust him. Oh, come on, y'all. Get in. Amen? God was through with you here if you go step on, on the other side. So number one, remember, you got a 100% track record. Stay strong, weather the storms. I will uh, oppose and then I will, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will stop and stop. I can't even talk. Praise God. There it is. <laughs> y'all can read. Y'all can read. Amen. I don't have those pictures up here with me. I, those pictures are down there for y'all and up here. Oh, here we go. I will pass and then it will pass. Praise God. <laughs> Stay strong. Weather the storm. It will pass and then you will make it through. It's hard to read good writing. Hey, Amen. Go ahead. It's hard to read good writing. Hey, Amen. <laughs> All right. Reminder number one is you have a 100% chance of getting through it. A uh, track record of getting through it. Number two. Watch this. This too shall pass. These two come to him one day and said, Daddy, I swallowed a marble and a quarter. I said, what did you do that for? He said, Daniel, Daniel dare me to put them in the my mouth and swallow them. He said, now what, Doug? I said, we're going to quote some word here. He said, what's that? I said, this, soon, this, this too shall pass. <laughs> Amen. So watch this. Here it is, 2 Corinthians 4, 6, 4, 6, 7, 8 thing. So now, or so, I, good God. That dream got me all messed up last night. I woke up, I've been so excited about that dream. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get up on the wrong side of the bed. I got up on the awesome side of the bed. Amen. Okay, here we go. 
Yeah, we were we were in Walgreens last night, and this this little autistic child came up and just hugged me, hugged Linda, and hugged me. First she hugged Linda, and she hugged me. And the grandma said she doesn't do that. She doesn't go to people. And then she takes Linda's hand, she takes my hand, and says, "Come here, grandma." Wow. And she says, "Let's pray." Wow. And we were in the checkout line at Walgreens. Of course, people behind us went around, <laughs> and we started praying. And as we were praying, it was just such an awesome prayer. And then Grandma started praying, and then, and then it was just amazing because she said, Lord, bless this man of God. And, and, and she didn't know I was a preacher. And just all the things that was going on, I said, God, something amazing is happening. There's something in the atmosphere. I see it. Something special is happening. Then I had that dream this morning. And, and I'm just telling you, it's just, just something is getting ready to happen. This too shall pass. Amen. So we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside it often looks like things are falling apart on us. Y'all listen carefully. One more time. Listen. Please don't get distracted. Put throw all the squirrels away. Ready? So we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside it often looks like things are falling apart on us. On the inside where God is making new life. Not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. These hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times, the lavish celebration prepared for us. There's far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today and gone tomorrow, but the things we cannot see will last forever. Whoa. Go ahead and give one another hand clap of praise for the word. His word, not our word, his word. And then, look, he lost it. Storms will come. She would order them from Sears and Roebuck. Y'all remember all that? She would order my clothes from Sears and Roebuck. By the time they got here, it already outgrown them. Y'all remember that? Yeah, yeah, I remember those days. Amen. So look, but you know, but but eventually, eventually, it got to where everything started started matching up. And in your life right now, there's things going on that you can't even figure out why it's going this way, why it's happening this way. But if you'll hold on, you'll see shall pass. God's got a plan. Amen? Now, reminder number three. Come on, here we go. Remember, quieter y'all are, the slower I am. <laughs> a diamond is a chunk of coal. I'm going to get it right this time. A diamond is a chunk of coal that did really well under pressure. Henry Kissinger. Do you remember him? A diamond is a chunk of coal that did really well under pressure. How good are you under pressure? <laughs> how, how good are you at handling when things are being thrown at you from everywhere? Watch this. Reminder number three. Here it goes. Diamonds are made under pressure, and so are you. The challenges will be, making, will be the making of you. What you're going through now, you think it's tearing you apart. It's not tearing you apart. It's making you. It's changing you. I can look back through my life, and it's always in the hardest of times when I thought God was farthest from me is when God was doing the greatest work in my life. God did some amazing things, and is still doing them. Amen? Diamonds are made under pressure, and so are you. Tell somebody that. Diamonds are made under pressure, and so are you. Tell somebody that. That's right. So look, look, look. So just say shine. 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 That's right. Look, here it goes again. I love it. There's more to come. It's Romans 5, 3 and 5. There's more to come. We continue to shout our praise even when we're hemmed in with troubles because we know how troubles can develop passionate patience in us. And how that patience in turn forges the tempered steel of virtue, keeping it alert for whatever God will do next. Life's challenges pressuring you they're softening your rough edges and molding you and shaping you. Amen? How many work with somebody that just grates you? How many work with somebody that really gets on your nerves? 
How I many know you got a neighbor or something? When you hear him talk, it's like chalk down the chalkboard. I mean, your finger down the chalkboard. You know somebody like that? You know, you got, you got somebody like that in your life and you're thinking, God, why can't you move them? And God says, because there's sandpaper I'm using to soften you. There's sandpaper I'm using to grind off the rough edges. Oh, I know. I know. I don't like his style, but he like, but look, he, he likes it, so we gotta contend with it. God will put you in some of the weirdest places with some of the weirdest people uh, that will grant your nerves just to see and what you see that he cares enough about you to take sandpaper and sand down the rough edges. You see, on the other side of this challenge, on the other side, y'all say that, on the other side of this challenge, you're gonna shine again, bigger and brighter than before. Wow, that's awesome. Now, now here, here, here's one of my favorites. All these are fun. All these are great. But this is one of my favorites. Pain can change you. But that doesn't mean it has to be a bad change. Take the pain and turn it into wisdom. Take the pain and turn it into wisdom. Wow. Reminder number four. All challenges can turn into wisdom. All of say all. Oh. All of them. The Bible says, if any of you need wisdom, let him ask of God, which give it to all men largely, they give it to all men largely, and a brain is not, and it shall be given unto him. James 1 and 5. You know, there's a difference in knowledge and wisdom. I've known some people that had knowledge, but didn't have wisdom. And actually, they just hurt people. I see other people didn't have knowledge, but they had wisdom, and they could do more with that wisdom than a man could with knowledge and no wisdom. Wisdom and no knowledge is better than knowledge and no wisdom. But together, wow, watch this. Here's the difference. Get ready. Knowledge is know-how, and wisdom is how-to. One is know-how, the other one is how-to application use the was wisdom that's there challenges for greater understanding skills and life wisdom matter of fact right now and i want y'all to say this to somebody look at somebody repeat after me look at somebody and say there's a purpose to what you're going through later on you're going to look back and thank god right now you can't thank him but later on you're going to go back and you're say you know what god thank you so much that you trusted me enough you know, uh, uh, I've told this illustration before, but I, it's perfect for right here. <coughs> years, 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 years ago, number one crop in Georgia was cotton. What's the number one enemy of cotton? Bowels. They had an epidemic of bowels. The farmers were going broke. They couldn't get rid of their their, their, their Cotton was totally destroyed constantly by the bowels. They didn't know what to do. They tried to find another kind of cotton to use. They tried to find the right kind of, of, of insecticide to use. But no matter what pesticide, but no matter what they used, they couldn't get rid of the bowels. Their, 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 their work was in vain because no matter how hard that they tried to work harder, they tried to, to figure out a better way to plant the cotton. No matter what they did, the bow weevil was tearing the cotton up. One farmer did some research. And he went and told the other farmers at a meeting, he said, I know what we need to do. We need to plant peanuts. We can't get rid of the bow weevil, but we can get rid of what he likes to eat. And so let's plant some peanuts. They said, you're crazy. And so he planted the fields, his fields full of peanuts. They're still planting cotton, but we was tearing them up. He plants his fields full of peanuts. When it came to harvest time, he didn't have to work half as hard as the other guys were working. And he made as much in four months as they made through the whole year because he planted peanuts. Now, what is Georgia known for now? Yeah. Amen. You know why? Because they said we found, we figured out how to beat that bow weevil. And instead of keep feeding him cotton that he likes, we'll feed him something he can't stand. And that is peanuts. 
Some of you in here right now, you just keep making your cotton, keep making your cotton, and the devil keeps beating you up, keeps beating you up, keeps beating you up. And God says, I want you to understand something. Your whole problem is you keep planting cotton. You got to learn. Sometimes you got to stop planting cotton, and you got to learn when the peanut season is and use that. After he did so good, the rest of the guys joined in, and like I said, the rest is history. Georgia is known for its peanuts. Some of y'all in here, if you could ask God, God, I, I got pain right now. God, I'm planting, I'm planting cotton, and, and I can't seem to get anything accomplished. The bowls are tearing me up. I can't get anywhere. Listen to him. Sometimes he's trying to tell you it's time to plant peanuts. It's time to figure out a different strategy and quit doing the same thing that you've always done. You know what Albert Einstein said, the definition of insanity, it, it, to keep doing what you always did and expect a different result. So, so, so watch this. God show me. Y'all say this to me. God show me what my bow noodle is. Show me how to take his food away and help me to flourish. Turn my pain into wisdom. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So, number four. Now, now here we go. Get ready. Get ready. This, this is good stuff here. Reminder number five. Come on. There we go. Sometimes, y'all listen to this. I'll, there's a song, there's a song like this too, uh, that I really, really like. Sometimes good things fall apart so that better things can fall together. Wow. Sometimes good things fall apart so better things can fall together. Every story has an end, but in life, every end is just a new beginning. Wow. So reminder number five. Sometimes things fall apart so that better things can fall together. Wow. I want you to just sit there and soak on that one for a while. Has there been a time in your life just think about it. Has there been a time in your life that you had this one thing that you thought you couldn't do without? And when God allowed it to be taken away, you, life was crushed until you realized he had something better in store. I like that t-shirt I saw when D.C. and Daniel were playing ball and it said, you can't steal second when your feet are still on first base. think sometimes everything's falling to pieces. It's not. God's doing something special in your life. Thank you for it. Philip Romans 8, 28, the Phillips translation says, Moreover, we know that to those who love God, who are called according to his plan, everything that happens fits into a pattern for good. Everything fits into a pattern for good. Sometimes, listen carefully, sometimes it's actually God's way of spring cleaning you to prepare you for the coming season in your life. You know, this morning, after I was so excited about the dream and all this, I, I was doing a little homework, and I'll be my last class, my last day of class is December 9th. And so I've got, after this class, I'm finishing up today and tomorrow. I've got three more classes, and it's over. I've got it. Like I said, the guy, my, my professor was trying to get me to go on to be a therapist. And I said, if I go to one more class, I'm going to need therapy. I've been going since 2015. I'm ready to get a break. So, 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 I remember this, this, this young lady responded to one of my threaded discussions. And she said, thank you for being so candid. Because this whole semester has been on grieving. And I talked a lot about Bethany. And, and I was open about it. And, and uh, even my last paper, which is a 12-page essay, Bethany is going to be uh, incorporated a lot in that paper. And, and I was so candid and open about all this. And she wrote me this morning and she said, thank you so much for allowing us to share in your life. Because not only do we share in your grief, We've watched you, and now we're sharing in your healing. 
And then she said, I really hate it. Then in a couple of months, because she, I go to people, go to school, people from, I mean, I go to people from England and people from, you know how it is when you're online, people from England, people from Australia, people from all over the place. And, and this girl here, I think, I'm not sure where she's from, I think she's from California. But she, she said, I hate that in a couple of months we will no longer be in class together. And it hit me. You know, I was excited, but at the same time, you know, I'm feeling kind of funny inside because now there's a change, another change. This didn't fall apart. This one is coming to a head. It's coming to an end. But, but again, again, every time we step out of one place, every time God, God closes that door, every time God allows it to be tore up, always look at it as a doorway, stepping into something else. Amen. So, 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 so again. Uh, so, so even though it's tempting to think that life is beating you down, just pause and remember, God is doing something in you that He can't do any other way. He's got you on the Potter's wheel. You're spinning. You're marred. You're spinning. Everything's out of control in your life, isn't it? Because everything's out of control in your life. That God's not around, not realizing that you're in the potter's hands. You're on the potter's wheel. Yes, everything's spinning out of control. And everything's being rearranged and everything's changing. You're going, I can't understand why everything's doing this. And God's saying, just be still. I, I, I know what I got. I, I got I got another thing in mind. I, 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 I had you voted one way, but I got a better way now. So just hold on. We're going to do something different. And, and it's amazing what happens. You know, now let me tell you a story. Uh, how many ever heard of a baseball player in the late 1900s or late 1800s or early 1900s? How many ever heard of a guy named Mordecai Brown? Okay, Mordecai Brown. You got to look. See, yeah. But Mordecai Brown, you know what uh, You know what his name was? Three fingers. This guy's a young guy. He was a good ball player, but as a young guy, he had two separate accidents. The first accident, uh, he actually was working a feeding feed material into a farmer's uh, a farm's uh, feed chopper, and he slipped, and his hand fell into the knives. When his hand fell into the knives, it, it severed much of his index finger, damaging the others, and the doctor repaired the rest of his hand as best as he could, but while he was still healing, he fell. And when he failed, he broke several fingers. They were not reset properly, especially the middle finger. So here's a guy with three fingers that are deformed. He still can play ball. So he goes and tries out for ball, and he's so good at it that he winds up being a minor league third baseman. As he's a minor league third baseman, The pitcher was down in the game, and the coach noticed how he threw from third base to first base, how the ball spun and dropped. And he said, look, he called him up and said, our pitchers are out. Can we put you in? He said, I've never pitched before. He said, that doesn't matter. I need you. I know you can throw strikes. You can get in. And he never stepped out of his pitcher spot again. Well, three fingers was impossible almost to hit. His win-loss record, he played, listen, he played from the age of 26 to the age of 40. <laughs> the guy had a win-loss record of 239 wins, 130 losses with three fingers. His earned run average was two. <laughs> two. Three fingers. He's in the Baseball Hall of Fame, put in there in 1949. After his career as a play ball player, he was a baseball manager. Now, he could have let, when he was a teenager, falling in that feeder 
and tearing his hands up. Although he was a wonderful baseball player, he could let that ruin his dreams. But instead, he kept pursuing his dream. And with three mangled fingers, a part of a finger and three mangled fingers, winds up being one of the greatest pitchers of his time. Let me ask you a question. What is falling apart in your life? What is in there right now that you're going, God, are you watching? God, do you see me? God, are you even paying attention? I mean, here I am. My fingers are falling to pieces. And by the time I think they're going to heal, I fall down and break them again. And God, God, do you understand, God, that, that I need to be a certain way to do what I want to do? And God's saying, do you understand that I don't need anything certain? All I need is somebody that's willing, and I can do something with you that you will never understand. And never regret. Some of y'all in here right now, remember, there's some things that have fallen apart. And you think life is over. You think your, your calling is over. You think that God can't use you anymore. Or you can think, wow, one time everything was wonderful. And now everything is stressful and it's tearing me apart. Just remember old Mordecai Brown. <laughs> he rose up. And was recognized. And wound up being awesome. God's got something for you. And here, here's reminder number six, which goes right along with it. Of course, that's life is never, it put a little too high. Okay, life is never the same after the storms of life. You'll be stronger, wiser, more alive than ever before. Your life will never be the same as God is molding you and he's shaping you and you see what's going on in your life and you think everything's falling apart but it's not falling. Cast your crown sings that. You think things are falling apart but they're actually falling together. Wow. You think God is punishing you and God's not punishing you. God's molding you and shaping you and God's making something special out of you. So reminder number six. What we resist Persist. <coughs> so it's vital to let go and flow. What am I talking about? If God's trying to do something in your life, how many, how many seems to walk around the same mountain a hundred times in your life? Guess what? I've learned that when I walk, I keep walking around the same mountain every, I'm always walking around the same mountain. Maybe I didn't learn what I was supposed to learn. Maybe I didn't understand. God was trying to show me something. I didn't see it. And so I got to change the way I walk. So I got to see what is he trying to show me. So I don't have to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. You're always going to be doing something. You're always going to have challenges. You're always going to have to work. You're always going to have to have to reach out to God. But if you just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, is it possible that you are resisting what God is trying to do in your life? Is this impossible? That your mind is made up. You know, I did something so I did something so crazy the other night. <sighs> Linda had a prescription. And it was late at night. She had a prescription to Dr. Gibber. And we were at the gas station. And I just told her before we got to the gas station, I said, I'll tell you what, won't you because the dogs haven't been fed and they haven't been taken care of. So I'll tell you what, we'll go to Walgreens and you just roll down the window and give me your prescription. I'll go take care of that and you go take care of the dogs. She says, fine. And then she stops for gas. So I'm leaning in her window. And I said, don't forget to stop at Walgreens and give me that prescription. She says, honey, you're in the window right now. Why don't I just give it to you now? You'll get in a minute. <laughs> I was so, I had my mind so set on her stopping at Walgreens, giving me the prescription, and me going in that when I was there, I didn't know when we talked about it, we knew we were going to the gas station. So here we are at the gas station. I walk over to the gas station, I'm leaning in the window. I could have just picked it up right there, but all I can think of is don't forget now when, when we get through getting gas, you stop my Walgreens and give me that prescription as I'm in the window. 
And she says, honey, I said, why? She says, where's the prescription? I said, it's right there. She says, why don't I just give it to you now? I said, wow, my mind is in a thousand places. You know, and she said, <laughs> and she said, what it was, was your mind was already set on the plan that you were going to stop at Walgreens and y'all was going to stop by and give you that. And so you had to get that plan out of your head because, because I, I made a detour and went to the gas station. Now you're right here. You can get it from me now. Uh, how many times has your mind been so fixed on what you thought was the plan that when the detour came or when the opportunity arose, you didn't take advantage of it or you didn't do what was coming because you had your mind so made up that this is the plan that you messed what God's trying to do for you. Get ready. Your, your, your attitude is everything when it comes to staying strong. Do you know that? The choice is yours. It starts in your mindset. You can be a victor or a victim. The choice is yours. Saying this is happening. You know, instead of saying this is happening and I choose peace. Tuesday nights, we've been going through this live now, live strong, and it's amazing. And, and the crowd keeps picking up. It's really good. The prisoners love it. They, they just want to say, I'm going tomorrow and I'm going to give them some more. And they just say, when, when are you come back? When are you, going to, when are you going to give us some more of this? Because this is helping us not to kill each other. <laughs> remember, remember I told you last week when the prisoner said, I was trying to read my Bible. He said, I read four pages and I didn't know what I read because these other guys were in here because they're in a big room. He, he said, the other guys were going to be quiet. He said, I, I was getting ready to get up and pop them all right in the head. Oh, you read your Bible, but you're going to get mad and get up and beat somebody up. I said, y'all play in church? <laughs> Smile, breathe something. <laughs> And the guys laughed at me and said, no, since you taught me how to breathe, now I haven't killed anybody. <laughs> All right. So, Tuesday nights, learning how to, how we handle things. When things come against us, a different way to handle it, a different way to, to, to shift ourselves, a different way to look at things, to change our mindset. When we change our mindset, it's amazing how things are different. It's amazing how things change. There's one thing we did the other night, and I want you to remember this. I want y'all to say this too. I can tell you right now, y'all have already been in the class, you know this, but those that haven't been, I'm going to give you a challenge. I can get you to change one word in your vocabulary, and it will change your outlook for good. How much like that? Change one word in your vocabulary, it'll change your outlook, the outlook for good. Get ready. <laughs> How many says, well, I got to go to work this morning? I got to go to work. No, no, how many say that? How many say that? Everybody say that? How many say, I've got to go to the grocery store? I've got to do this, I've got that. I want you to change it from I've got to, to I, I get to. Instead of I have to, I get to. When, you, when your job is driving you crazy, instead of going, oh, God, I, got, I have to go to work this morning, you say, I get to go to work this morning. Why? Because there's thousands of people that out of work would love to have your job. When you go home at night, you say, I have to go back to that cranky spouse. Instead of saying, I have to go back to that spouse, say, I get to go back to that spouse. Because there's thousands of people that would have your spouse. No questions asked. And nobody here, y'all don't, don't, don't offer to give one away. <laughs> I don't have to go to church this morning. I get to go to church. Amen. Wow, I don't have to wash my clothes. I get to wash my clothes because I pass by hundreds of people that go to a laundromat. 
They don't have a washing machine. I don't have to go to the grocery store. I can get to go to the grocery store because there's hundreds of people that wish they had enough money to even step foot in food line. So change the way you look at it. Change that one word. I don't have to. I get to. And your life, your life will start changing. You will not be the same. There it is. You will not be the same after the storms of life. You'll be stronger, wiser, more alive than ever before. Sometimes you just have to bow your head. Say a prayer. Come on, Pastor, I say something. Mm -hmm. This lesson that he's been doing Tuesday night, I can really tell the difference in myself. Especially this last week. Uh, it, it, it's grown on me. But this last week really made a difference. Praise the Lord, sister. Praise the Lord. I'll go with it. Amen. Made a difference in my life, too. It's amazing. It's amazing what God does when we can stop and let Him change our mindset. Do it His way. That's right. See, there's, there's a whole lot better to do it His way. Amen. Okay. Everybody stand.
we don't understand what's going on. And all you hear is God say, trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Yeah. Caterpillar goes in looking just like a caterpillar when it comes out it's totally changed. Everything is changed. Everything. It walks different. It smells different. It eats different. It does different. Totally. Where it crawled up the tree, now it flies down.
How you handle when somebody gets around you and starts talking junk to you? How you handle? That's pretty cool. How many of you ever had people talk junk to you? Okay. Or if somebody comes to you and they're exploding, how to handle it and how to get through it and how to have that peace. And remember this. All this we're doing is getting you to a position where you can hear from God. Because 90% of the time, your circumstances are speaking so loud, you can't hear God. And this is all about learning to hear from God. And remember this, when God talks, it's always in a redemptive way. Remember that. We'll talk about it Tuesday night. It's always in a redemptive way. Something good is going to come from it. It's always, it always has a redemptive tone to it. Amen? And also remember, if you, if you, that, I can't even name it, the Christian church or the Church of Christ or however that is, Brother Pollock's church, uh, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, we're having a revival. Amen. So it's in Grifton, so if, if you want to go, you can call one, you can, well, we'll find it, we'll give you an address so you can get to it. It's really easy to get to, it's not hard at all, it's just you got to know how to get to it. Amen. But, but he, he, look, Brother, he, Brother Pollock's an awesome guy. <laughs> He's absolutely one of the finest men I've ever met in my entire life. And, and I can't wait. Amen? All right. So, so all hearts and minds clear? Amen. Brother Steve, will you dismiss us in prayer, please? Father God, we just pray. Thank you so much. Bless us with your presence in our lives every day. And Lord, help us to recognize that you have 